show that we are now uh, completing a journey. We started with a given student three years or even many years uh, ago. Our minimum years are three years. Of course, others may go beyond. Uh, but I think uh, the candidate we have could have done it three or you let us know, let us shall know. But uh, the, the viral voice uh, is considered by a panel uh, and the, uh, the candidate uh, comes in to present his work. The composition of the panel and the procedure of the presentation uh, is always as follows. We have a chairperson of the, 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 the panel who is always the dean of the school where the student belongs. In this case, the dean of social sciences is the chairperson of this uh, session. And the, we have an internal examiner. We have an external examiner uh, where possible. Uh, normally they are present, but this time our external uh, examiner asked us to allow him uh, for us virtually. And since we have IT uh, now, it is possible to do that. Then uh, we, we shall have two supervisors uh, of the student, and then two senior staff members from that school. And the, any other staff member or member of the public who may be invited or interested in listening to the Bible say may attend because the PhD defense is a public presentation. So we always uh, encourage uh, the audience. The student can even invite the whole village if he wanted to attend. Hello, doctor. Can we talk? Because we need to confirm whether we have a full panel. Uh, the audience, you're most welcome. Those who are physically here and the, those who are following us online. And I've gone through briefly, the, the chairperson of the session uh, is here. The, she will constitute uh, the panel uh, officially. And we are not constituted. I was just speaking as a director of psychology studies. Dr. Anna Maho, you're most welcome uh, to this, uh, I will say. And I want to 
uh, to call turn over the mic to your constituent to stand officially. We have not yet prayed. We we'll also call for a prayer. <coughs> but I wanted to hear first from you ask whether because the, one of the examiners is not here physically but is online. But we shall not start until we hear his voice. Yes, Colin, I've not yet, I've not had the, our external examiner. Is he following us? He is, eh? But he's not able to talk. How will he communicate there? Okay, in the meantime, let's have a prayer. And uh, I wanted to, to give a chance to Osman to have a prayer in his own religion this time. Yeah, you can come and pray. Who is praying? Yeah, Abbaqar is a member of the of the uh, the audience, and I think as we come escorting our candidate, so Abbaqar can give us a prayer. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك في هذا القرآن وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْقَافِلِينَ إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ إِحْدَى عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ سَاجِدِينَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَخْسُسْ رُؤْيَتَكَ عَلَى إِخْوَتِكَ فَيَكُونُوا لَكَ كَيْدًا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنْسَانِ عَدُوًّا مُبِينًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا I'm going to briefly translate that prayer in English. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here to escort my uh, elder brother. And I really appreciate for what he has done. And actually, that prayer was about uh, Prophet Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, he was, he dreamed, he dreamed, and he tried to tell his brothers, and his father told him, don't tell your brothers, because they might, uh, they might think something bad to you. So just keep quiet, like you don't know. So that, I think that is explanation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Abubakar, for that good prayer. Uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, I want to hand over the mic to you, and you take us through. Thank you, Director. Good morning, members present. I ask that we constitute the panel for the PhD viva, and in accordance with Chapter 23, uh, 2310 of the postgraduate program of the University Rules and Regulations. I hereby constitute the PhD viva for Mansoor Arab Yunus Umar, held on Monday, 31st May 2021 at Nkumba University. I want to very quickly take you through um, the 
panelists that are present today and the expectations from each of us. The chairperson is myself, Dr. Anne Abaho. Uh, the roles of the chair is to chair the viva, listen to the presentation by the candidate, raise questions about the presentation, guide according to the presentation and score the candidate. Dr. Frank Fiochinji is a senior member of staff. His role is to listen to the presentation by the candidate, raise questions about the work, contribute in guiding the candidate, score the candidate. Dr. George Oro, senior staff member, his purpose is to listen to the presentation, raise questions about the work, contribute in guiding according to the presentation, score the candidates. Dr. Robina Mirembe is an intern examiner whose purpose is to listen to the presentation by the candidate, raise questions about the presentation, contribute in guiding the candidate, and score the candidate. Dr. Daniel Kumakech in absentia is the is present online is the external examiner. He will listen to the presentation by the candidate, raise questions about the work, contribute and guide the candidate accordingly, score the candidate as well. Dr. Charles Edaku, his purpose is to listen to the presentation, raise questions. Dr. Charles Edaku is the supervisor and he will also contribute to guiding the candidate. Associate Professor Asimwe Mucha Solomon is the supervisor. He will listen to the presentation by the candidate, raise questions about the presentation, and also contribute to guiding the candidate following the presentation. I want to ask um, the supervisors, let's just take note that the supervisors, Dr. Charles Sedaku, and Associate Professor Simu Mucha Solomon will not score the candidate. I want to ask at this moment that the candidate and members of the audience permit us some time out and we shall be inviting you back. Those that are following us online, we are going to resume in the shortest time possible.
We are ready to listen to the candidate. It is exactly 11. We are giving you one hour of presentation. So at exactly 12, you will have to stop. You can begin now. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, the members of panel, my supervisors, dear colleagues, my family, good morning. My name is Mansour Arbab, Yunis, Omar. I'm here to present my PhD uh, thesis, which is titled State Formation and National Security in Africa, taking a Sudan as a case representing all Africa. The aim of this study is to examine state formation, how it influences national security in Africa. And the study was based on an assumption that despite the fact that the state of Sudan been formed through the process of state formation to protect its nationals and itself. However, it is national security been challenged continuously since it get formed in 1956. And since its independence in the very day or very year of 1956, Sudan has experienced only a period of one decade of peace. This study has a background of the study, which is classified into four perspectives. In details, conceptual framework, theoretical framework, contextual framework, and con uh, conceptual framework. From conceptual framework, state formation is the merging of a state control, which builds the difference between the rest of organizations achieving self-administration and getting recognition in, the, in that status by other political entities, such as state and international system. Something here disturbing me, please. This one. Because I'm not seeing this one. It is important to note that the way the state formation process evolves and how it got its independence or, or and how it is formed through the process always affect its national security of a particular state like Sudan. That's according to BWR of 2014. Sudan's was independent history of a state formation has been denot uh, denoted political and civil strives, including civil wars, political tensions, and political unrest. The failure to agree on a supreme constitution in Sudan, the, the unjust formation of state institutions, uh, the absence of the stable political system, poor nation building, and permanent complex humanitarian emergencies in the country, destructive civil wars in different regions within Sudan, and gross human rights abuses, among other issues contributed directly to the national insecurity, according to Blanchich of 2000. While there have been many factors contributed to the existence of national insecurity in Sudan, the study would possibly allude to the inconsistencies of challenges in the state formation process. 
This study, therefore, intended to examine how the state formation process affects national security in Africa, particularly taking Sudan as a case. Theoretical background. The study was guided by realist theory of Patrick Carroll, 2009. This theory stipulates the notion of the use of force as a major driving uh, factor for state formation. The realist theory is regarded as a true and correct theory regarding the origin of the state. The explanation given by this theory, which is realist theory, builds the uh, assumptions of how Sudan went through the conquest and implications they had the national security of Sudan. Several sovereigns have intended, have, in, have the intention to maximize their economic, political, and military powers through military expansion and subjugation of other political, uh, of other polities for taxation, according to uh, Marshmere. 2001. Unfortunately, this laptop has issues. So it is better to use PowerPoint. So. Because it covers the points that I should. If it is possible, you can take it as well. Even this one. Yes, if possible. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Is it the same? Or it's not the same. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can see. That's why if I can get another laptop, which is free, it's much better. You're waiting for it to get free. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. It's okay. And I wish this one not to disturb me. It's too much. Can it be downsized? Like that, I can agree. Flash. 
You know, this one is the using it online and want to control it so many people. Yes. That wouldn't have been a problem. It's all about you. Let's see how we will start. We start a fresh discussion. We start a fresh So, Mansoor, we are giving you it's now uh, 13 minutes after the and we still have one hour. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. My name is Mansoor Arbab Yunis. After you read that, okay. Thank you. Um, 
This study is about state formation and national security in Africa, having Sudan as a case representing Africa. I have been supervised under uh, Solomon Asumi and Dr. Charles Idako. Uh, the aim of this study is to investigate state formation and national security in Africa. The study was based on an assumption of, despite the fact that Sudan has formed through the process of the state formation to protect itself and its national from outside uh, threats and internal threats. However, it is national security continuously being challenged since its formation in 1956. Since that time, this from 1972 up to 19 of the study is classified into four perspectives, conceptual framework. The state formation is making of a state control which will difference between the rest of organizations achieving self-administration and getting uh, cognition in the status by other political uh, it is important to note that the way state formation process evolves or how it managed often affects its national security uh, a particular state like sudan according to peter Biar of 2015. sudan's post-independent history of a state formation has been uh, dominated by political and civil strives, number of civil wars in different regions, including Darfur, Nuba Mountain, Blue Nile, and even the East, and uh, the failure to agree on a supreme constitution in Sudan. Sudan, since it is formation up to now, it has no permanent constitution. Every government comes as its own constitution. When it goes, others come and set their own constitution. The unjust formation of state institutions, the absence of a stable political system, poor national building, uh, poor nation building, and permanent complex humanitarian emergencies in those war zones, uh, in Sudanese experience, destructive civil wars and gross human rights abuses, among others, contributed greatly to the national insecurity. According while while there have been many factors attributed to the existence of national insecurity in Sudan, the study would possibly allude to the consistencies and challenges of state formation process. This study, therefore, intended to examine how, in Africa, particularly taking Sudan as a case, representing Africa. Theoretical background, the study uh, was guided by realism, realist theory of international relations, which is by uh, Patrick Carroll of 2009. The realist theory is regarded as the true and correct theory uh, regarding the origin of the state. The explanation of a given theory, which is a realism, built the case of how Sudan went through uh, the conquest and implications of uh, implications that it has uh, on its national security. Several sovereigns have the intention of maximizing their economics, political, and military powers through military expansion, especially in international system. Uh, the more powerful states, that is the, the aim, according to realism theory, that a state must survive by all means. So therefore, they should go and look uh, for resources to maximize their economics, their political, through the military expansions and subjugation of other political, uh, other politics for taxation. The, uh, this uh, conquests, have been feature states like Britain, Turkey, and Egyptian. Sudan has been conquered by three states, Egypt, Britain, and Turkey. 
historical background, the Republic of Sudan was formed on 1st January 1956 after the British and Egyptian uh, government recognized the independence of Sudan and inherited its boundaries from Anglo-Egyptian uh, Sudan, which was established in 19, 1899. Since its independence or independence, Sudan has lived in protracted interactable civil wars, military coups, political instability and civil strife, the insecurity, which are all characterized characteristics of today's national insecurity of Sudan. Sudan is characterized by multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-region, and multi-religions uh, that divided between African and Arab Muslims from West, Middle, and North, and uh, African South, which is largely Christians and few Muslims, according to a study of 2012. The tension based on the religious and social divisions has caused Sudan to know only 10 years of peace, according to Assad and himself. Contextual background, the insufficiency of national security of Sudan as a state like some other states, national security in Africa, like Libya, Democratic Republic of Congo, Central African Republic, like Mali and other, the uh, states represent a classic example of how poor, incomplete, and violent institutions and uh, interrupted state formation process deliberately in initiated by European colonization and imperialism that has fostered risks and vulnerabilities on national security sphere of Sudan and its uh, in African states with dire consequences of state building and nation building. While many solutions have been uh, sought after recommendation in the study done on relationship between civil wars and uh, national civil wars and uh, formation, there are no any studies that have been uh, carried out, carried on the relationship between state formation and national security. Uh, this absence of the study contributed to the inappropriate measures, uh, strategies, and approaches to strengthen Sudan's institutions and bring peace and stability in Sudan. Uh, the earliest conquest by the tax and later the Toko Egyptian conquest explained how state formation was first of all done by the Turkish and the Egyptians and subsequently by the British who made the law of closed area in Sudan. Uh, this course of events explains the failure which appeared in the formation of the state of Sudan, which later manifested in critical and traditional uh, threats that compromised national security of Sudan. Statement of the problem, states always have nest the risk to strengthen their security and economics and protect the national security against internal and external threats by protecting themselves and the, their people and providing the basic needs to themselves and their people to survive. States that were formed through the process which were not interrupted by outsiders always states they have no problem like uh, like weak institutions like civil wars ethnicity and are not referred to as failed or collapsed states the reality is so that, that despite the efforts to strengthen the, the institution of the state and stabilize the political situation which has been done regionally and also nationally and internationally, but different regions in Sudan, they raise up arms and Sudan continuously in a status of having civil wars in different regions. And that one are no, that one suggests that there is no comprehensive and durable efforts of uh, national integration 
the secession of South Sudan in July 2011, severe economic decline and continuous political instability and continuous political tense, deeply conflicted, dangerous, and uh, constantly bitterly by warring factions have become also uh, causes for great concerns by marking Sudan as failed state. Uh, because of such civil wars that Sudan is experiencing, we have more than 1.7 million of the nationals in the two areas, which is the Nuba Mountain and Blue Nile, they are, uh, which is half of the population in the two areas displaced, according to Alex Dual. In Darfur alone, internally displaced like 2.5 million and over 4.4 million requiring humanitarian assistance and almost like 735,000, they are refuge in outside, uh, in outside states in the region and in Europe and in America and different states. More than 1 million children have been killed, raped, wounded, displaced, traumatized, or endured the loss of parents and families, according to Total 2016. Sudan has resources like any other states in Africa. That can make it to uh, strengthen its institutions and build good institutions like insecurity continuously, uh, its insecurity is continuously uh, affecting national security of Sudan. Since its independence, Sudan has um, experience only 10 years, as I have said. Therefore, if there is nothing being done in Sudan, uh, maybe the, the regions that is still fighting with the center may look for secession like South Sudan. And in that time, Sudan will collapse and wither away. Therefore, uh, this is study that attempt to examine how state formation process in Sudan has affected its national security. The purpose of the study, the purpose of this study is to explore the critical influence of its state formation on national security in Africa, particularly taking Sudan as a case. This study described a qualitative study of the state formation and national security in Africa with the aim of developing a state formation model that would guide on national security issues of specific objectives to assess the factors of the state formation of Sudan, to examine the influence of the state formation on national security of Sudan, to establish the contribution of national and international institutions uh, to the security of Sudan. Side questions. What are the factors of the state formation for the state of Sudan? How has the state formation influenced the national security of Sudan? How have national and international institutions contributed to the national security of Sudan? Scope of the study, time scope, this study covered 1956 to 2020. The um, content scope, the study attempt to study a state formation and national security in terms of the political influence, a potential influence of uh, indi uh, uh, independent variable, which is the state formation on dependent variable, which is national security in Sudan, representing the African content depth, uh, depth investigation. The study investigated uh, men and women from 40 to more than 70 years. Theoretical coverage of the study, the study guided by realist theory, geographical scope, the study covering Sudan. And uh, when we come to the area, geographical area, you can see the boundaries of Sudan. Uh, this is literature review, chapter two. The literature review was guided by three objectives of the study based on the state formation and national security as variables of
perspective that the selection, uh, the selected population was based on the criteria include the influence of uh, the institution that has on national security and accessibility. And six institutions were esteemed. Uh, um, the institutions that are concerned with the protection of national security were identified and selected. Uh, the sectors that can be source of security concern include the military, the economic, uh, the political, the societal, and environmental security threats. In the present study, the institutions and the state formation under the state or the state institutions are uh, Okay, a major selection has been done on the two reasons or criteria. The first one, to investigate, uh, to investigate the process of state formation through which the institutions were formed and how their function uh, influence on its, of, its, of national security of Sudan. The second one, to increase the generalizability of the findings, given the fact that Charlotte May, 2008, found a significant difference between the state formation uh, of the state in Europe and in Africa. The institutions also reflect the sectors that were identified as sources of security threats. And therefore, when they are established, they are established, they are built to manage and control the threats that are implied under them. The targeted population was those officials that were in the institutions for a period of not less than 10 years, have, and those one have a knowledge about the evolution of the institutions in Sudan, work with the, uh, the people who were there before them and had taken part in, this, uh, in the structuring of the institutions. Um, so much sample size, uh, is associated with the qualitative studies. Qualitative studies are so mindful of the information that collected because a substantial figure of any uh, of many also may fail in provision of the accuracy and correctness. That's according to Freeman and Bell of 2003. Uh, in consideration of the period of time which is needed for analysis, which is complex and in-depth, qualitative data demands a smaller number of respondents, which is less than 50 or even less than 30 uh, for the interviews that were planned according to body 2016 and uh, Sandu of 1995. Such numbers, therefore, uh, were large enough for the qualitative study like this one. The researcher, therefore, did not expect it, uh, did not expect to have predetermined number of respondents in total, given the fact that one key informant may, may decide to refer the investigator to another key informant for some clarification and deeper understanding of the given aspect of the researcher therefore remain open to number uh, to the number of uh, key informants for from a given uh, institutions. These are the categories of the respondents uh, from the executive uh, to B3, from the judiciary four, uh, purposively, then from the legislature I investigated five, from the uh, academic uh, academic institutions, from the universities. In Sudan, investigated five, passively those who knows the history of Sudan, and social institutions and political leaders. I have investigated seven, uh, passive and expert sampling using passive and expert sampling officials from the archive. Uh, being three who have been investigated, the total was twenty-seven respondents. Data collection method, the study used qualitative method in the collection of data, including the interviews 
because the key informants were thought to have in-depth information about the two variables of the study, which is the state formation and national security, because of their experience and their work nature in the institutions. Data collection tools was interview guide. Uh, data analysis, I used a number of uh, methods to analyze the data, one of these. Uh, uh, to validate the findings by the Dutch approach under the phenomenology, and then still uh, the interview, the interviews were then used to extend into deeper interpretation and understanding of the events, which eventually led to the uh, uh, the revelations of uh, perspectives and or not recorded or published. Chapter four, which is uh, uh, the, the, the permanent political philosophical underpinning that feature in this study is that people do not willingly agree to form a state to maximize their benefits. So, but they are often forced by the use of complex by dominant group, which sometimes use operation to make the others pay taxes to the uh, dominant group, which eventually establishes centralization in a geopolitical area like Sudan. In it is this very explanation which forms the basis for the explanation of in the form of state formation can be divided into two, the earlier state formation, which can be traced from the works of uh, anthropologists like David Stanford, uh, who found out that human nature formed, stratified, but bureaucratically governed societies. However, Many of these studies were not referred to states in Africa. They all, many of them, the majority was referring to a state in Europe. It is after the work of David Sandiford that the next generation of scholars started looking at the creation of institutions where they had not existed before, like uh, Greek civilization, Malagasy civilization, and Madagascan civilization. It is the history of such states that formed and informed the earliest historical process of state formation. The other um, <clears throat> level of state formation that the state formation, which is the tide, uh, this history began with the process of uh, creation of institutions that supports the development of modern state. And this was around medieval state and Africa during the decolonization era, which is started around mid fifties up to late seventies. And uh, however, in 1933, there was this convention recognized and agreed on the components of the state, which are four, population, territory, uh, government, and recognition for sovereignty. The significant, of, uh, the significant concern was the way the new state have, that was created could not be the same as the uh, the way states created in Europe, even if they have the same characteristics of the four, the major ones is still in Africa, because in Africanization, the historical uh, dimension also explains why this study is being carried out in trying to investigate more about state formation and national security in Sudan. The philosophers that, uh, that are central to the foundation of the state uh, formation include Plato, 
Nicola Machiavelli, Ibn Khaldur, Jenna Bordei, Robert Carnero, uh, Franz, and Thomas Hobbes, and many realist philosophers, selfish, that is at the center of trying to get uh, what is owned by other people and subsequently the need to subjugate the owners for the resources. Chapter five, the first chapter of the results presents and discusses the perceptions of the respondents on the process of state formation of Sudan, the motivation which has led to carry out the study is to examine and see how national security. The question being tested are that the state formation is affected by unique factors within the geographical area uh, where the state evolves. And this includes the social fabric of the people, the nature of the economy, and livelihood and others. Um, so the participating respondents were a state meant to them as individuals working in the government uh, departments or institutions that are so critical for national security in Sudan. From the findings, on the definition of the state, it can be the state that emerged after the Treaty of Westphalia of 1648. Uh, 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 one belongs to its own government. The, uh, the state is it a group of government institutions and bureaus and people in the territory belonging to the government or its own. It, the, the, the interview was on 10th January, 2020. What seems to be very different is that the application of this definition, a state in Europe, it may be the same state in Africa or anywhere else, has population, has territory, has a government, and has maybe recognition by the international institutions. But to apply these four elements in a state in Africa, when you come to territorial control, for example, that is a territory, the territorial control, when you come to the government with institutions in the government, when you come to the uh, recognition, yes, we do have recognition by other states, but the way we have been managed by other powerful states was the concern. Uh, the experiences are reflection. The expressions are reflection on how the concept of national security, national and the state have different elements. For example, the unity, common consciousness, and seems that the components. That the components of the unity of uh, persons developed are result of result of several common social and cultural elements. Scene number two: formation of national identity. People stay together for a long time and therefore develop the fabric of culture norms, cultural norms and values that bind them together, forming one net nation. One nation. Uh, scene number three: components of uh, a genuine state. Other, on the other hand, the elements, the elements of the state are associated with elements like population, territory, uh, government, and sovereignty. And it is thought that it is non-existence of a single component. The state not recognized, the state is not recognized as a genuine state as described in what is referred to as a state of Westphalia. 
the findings of the chapter, we uh, the, the study uh, found uh, social factors and economic factors and military factor five imposing taxes and looking for natural resources according to uh, respondent number 13 uh, and the came to sudan for gold and other natural resources and men that much to sudan not uh, taxes and expanding from the southern part up to ugandan territories uh, as i have said the invaders came with the military factors uh, like the tax egyptian and the british that were involved in the centralization of societies that were found in the geographical area of sudan chapter six influence of the state formation on national security of sudan uh, to examine how state formation process influenced national security in sudan that participating respondents were initially asked how they define security and national security and their uh, their opinions were captured uh, i have a theme uh, security is freedom from any danger. According to Respondent 16, when he was defining security, he said that uh, security is the safety of the individuals or an individual economically, socially, politically, and environmentally without any danger from anything. Freedom of threat. It can be as, uh, asserted that this literature is common on one thing from the literature that protecting from threats that can be uh, that can compromise the well-being of the uh, refrain of the security as put forward by Copenhagen School of Security. Scene eight: a state, a state, a state needs institution to protect itself and its people. If a state doesn't have a strong institutions cannot provide security and the basic needs of the people in Sudan in, uh, in, the, in its area. Uh, theme nine, Sudan has threatened by critical and traditional security threats. That is true because of the weak institution that been formed. Uh, the invaders, when they come, they divide the society institutions. In terms of social and political, uh, many of the armed conflict in Sudan has been based on social and political uh, factors, which were explained by respondents and other considering the fact that ethnicity, language, and uh, religion are indicated when it come when it came to the threat that conf uh, conf confront the state of Sudan. Theme number eleven: Sudan security threatened. Uh, threats inherited by the colonials. While this is the case, it is important to point out that these threats were inherited from the process of a state formation, which was constructed by the colonials who built a state on division. They divide the nation, then they construct, they built the, the weak institutions. Uh, Findings of chapter six national security threats, the weakness of the national unity, and due to the policies which are lava in brackets, the, uh, the exporting of uh, such as the Fu Brunei and uh, Nuba Mountains and the East even, then, uh, and the extreme opportunity management of the resources outside and civil wars are all threats to national security of Sudan. The negative role of the alliance in national uh, disunion in Sudan to, to manage the, the uh, the nation of Sudan, the aliens, when they came to Sudan, they divided the nation into different groups and 
they play with the, they, um, they posted uh, the, the, the policy of divide to rule. National institutions that formed under colonial influence and its failure to provide the needs of a state of Sudan. Yes, these institutions been formed by former colonials and the basis of formation of such institutions was uh, on, basis, on the basis of uh, dividing the nation, the threat in its well, social, political, economic, environmental, and military uh, situation, therefore laid uh, the feeble ground for institutions that could not protect the national security of Sudan. This informed the desire to investigate how the state formation influenced the issues of national security as raised by the respondents in this study. Uh, chapter seven, contribution of national and international uh, institutions to the security of Sudan. Uh, the coming in of the aliens into Sudan at the aim uh, at the aim when the process of the state formation was evolving they interrupted the evolution of the capacity of the indigenous people to build institutions that were going to deal with their needs they created institutions that were not meant to serve fully the indigenous people but to exploit the resources in the area of the influence according to respondent one the Sudanese state institutions are characterized by failure as a result of poverty in appointment. Respondent is negatively affected the national security of the state of Sudan, and now it is difficult to change or to liberate institutions from sectarianism and build modern state institutions. And that was uh, by the respondent 21 on uh, in Khartoum on 10th of January, 2020, scheme number 17, elements of colonized state institutions built by elements in Africa. Uh, the further showed how how inherited institutions that were meant to serve the interests of the colonials, the institutions, economic imperialism and political authoritarianism, and meant for the integration of the colonies into imperial domination of the colonized power who do not protect the people and the state of Sudan. Uh, Theme 18, international institutions and policy of the political, um, political among nations. Sudan being colonized by, by international powers, those who are very influenced in the international system, including Britain, Egypt, and Turkey. So yes, they played a role of how to, to uh, help those uh, humanitarianly being affected during the civil wars, but obviously, they are trying to manage Sudan by the policy of divide to rule, weakening the, uh, the, the nation. Uh, uh, theme 19, the aliens, closed areas, plant uh, a seed of the secession of South Sudan. When they came, they put a low lows for in the, to close areas like South Sudan. South Sudan been blocked from the entire Sudan. And the, the communication between the southern part of Sudan and the rest of the Sudan was not that much. Even the issue of the communication been, uh, been uh, affected of uh, the northern uh, part of Sudan education. And uh, they traded in uh, human trafficking. They took South Sudanese as commodities. They took them as slaves and outside. And that one planted a seed of 
to divide the nation extremely. And from there, the, 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 the war of 1983, which led by uh, Dr. John Grant de Maguire. And before that, even in 1955, before the leave of uh, the aliens, the war was started in South Sudan. Therefore, uh, the behavior of uh, the aliens with the people of Sudan, that is the one uh, planted a seed of the secession of South Sudan. Yes, many other factors are there, but the, the main one being caused by aliens. Uh, overall, uh, conclusion and uh, contribution to the knowledge, that is chapter eight. And on objective one, the factor, factors of the state formation uh, of Sudan, we have military factor, as we explained, we have economic factor, we have uh, e uh, military factor, economic and social factor. Uh, on the theme two, influence of a state formation on the national security of Sudan. The study concluded that the state formation process influenced the national security as a process of building social, economic, military, and political institutions in the areas which was uh, disrupted uh, by the colonials. It also proved that there were divisions that were meant to make it easier for the colonies to build a system that would serve uh, their interests and therefore the institutions were not built only to protect the societies in Sudan but mostly to protect the interests of the colonial in Sudan. The study equally concluded that the process of state formation in Sudan was not owned by the people of Sudan and therefore all the institutions that were built did not have adequate inputs of the indigenous people. Therefore, uh, could not therefore, the institutions could not protect fully the interests of the people of Sudan, but mainly to protect the interests of the colonials in Sudan. Objective three, the contribution of national and international institutions to the security of Sudan. The study concluded that the national institutions which were uh, left by conquerors cannot be helpful considering the fact that a state with division which were deep, deepened by conquerors uh, for their selfish ends and even when they left they are not working to make these states and institutions stronger but to maintain their weaknesses and state. The study further concluded national institutions in Sudan have failed to deal with the local uh, disputes. Uh, the study also concluded that international institutions are powerful and are at the center of the influence of small institutions to integrate the new disputes under the different institutions like United Nations. Uh, and the World Trade Organization, and also provided humanitarian assistance to the needy people in the conflict area areas. The bipolarity of the international system is also worsening the security situation in the state, like Sudan. Therefore, international institutions have not done much. Otherwise, the debated genocide of the with that national security can only be guaranteed if the state formation process was not interrupted within the political history, history context of, uh, in context of the state of Sudan. Sudan has not gained much since there, there are many uh, barriers that it faced to put the interest of Sudanese or the Sudanese. It is very hard to imagine that the economic security of Sudan can be made over which such institutions are still. The current model for the Sudan, which caused insecurity in the...
in this model, we have First hand findings contribute to our comprehending of the relationship between state formation dynamics and national security. This study also contributes to our understanding of the interrogation of how states or nation state uh, were formed and how their national security was affected. Other factors that foster state formation process interruption include the, uh, the presence of powerful military uh, of uh, already developed state in need of economic resources, racism and ex uh, uh, xenophobia, which, make, which makes the invading forces to look at the vanquished as inferior and therefore their, na their, na their, na their nation, their nations, culture, value and traditions do not matter and can be done away with it. it can be done away with because they can galvanize uh, their resolve to fight those interruptions. The research contribution, contribution to knowledge is still the aspect of military conquest of the weak by powerful state for economic interest. The division of weak nations and their alienation from one another and destruction of the values, customs, and traditions are systematic, systematically follow each other. Once the military strong state uh, 
or nation state identify economic resources in a military weak polity and military require resources and spaces to grow like human being. The success of the invaders depend on their ability and capacity of the military uh, uh, to dominate the weak nation. Agents can be created in the system in the in the, uh, in the uh, colonizing state for the tight control over the people and the uh, practical contribution. Next. Uh, this is the uh, the national identity and culture uh, model of the sustainable integrated state formation that uh, governed that uh, guaranteed the national security of the state of Sudan. We have uh, primary state formation state which has culture, norms, values, and customs, ethnicity, and others. This one. The, 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 the process here leads us to the national identity where the people, they unite themselves, become one and have an, one national identity. This one national identity come to uh, the second stage to uh, form a sustainable integrated state which has a uh, population, the territory, which has uh, government and social institutions and uh, uh, and, the, and the sovereignty of the state must be uh, must be given the um, recognition by other states. When the process goes like normal process without any intervention of the outsiders, this will lead us to the national security, which is stable and guaranteed, including the traditional security. A state will be uh, secured from the outsiders internally. State will be uh, able to manage it is on internal threats. So these external forces, because of the security dilemma, they start looking for, uh, for intervent to, to intervene and have economic resources. Therefore, they come and, and influence here. If they found this activity here form a strong uh, and united nation here, they fail to influence negatively. They cooperate with them, then they come here. Also, they come and try and influence here. When they find here uh, a strong nation with one identity, uh, yeah. then it, at the end, they cooperate. And all these determine the quality of national security in a given state, and which is the state. I have assumptions of uh, the very model that I came with. Societies have cultures, customs, norms, and values that bind them together, that make uh, a dominant society with the military power brings uh, different societies together into one nation. Threats that disrupt state formation come from outside the geopolitical. National security is grounded, is guaranteed when national identity uh, and societies internally evolve. These are the four. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Members, it is time for question and answer session. The IT team, I am hoping that our colleague online is still on. We are giving 10 minutes to Dr. Daniel Komakech to raise questions, and then we'll come to the internal examiner. Hello. 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 I can hear you. Okay. Am I loud and clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think I can start. Huh? Hello? 
Hello? We can hear you loud and clear. Oh, sure. Um, first, I want to thank very much uh, the student or the candidate Mansour uh, Habab, Yunus Omar, for taking us through a very classical area of research. Uh, this is state formation and national security. Uh, this is a, a clearly an important and an interesting research area, particularly for Africa. And essentially, as it did mention for Sudan, given the historical uh, turmoil it went through. So it is a huge success that the student picks this particular area. Uh, and as I said, it's not just an interest in research, but also in the dominant literature dealing with uh, state politics, state relations, and international politics. So to that far, <clears throat> I congratulate the student having taken us to this very, very, very interesting research and study area. Uh, having said that, allow me also to reflect together with the student on very particular areas. Hello? 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 The online Hello? team hears you well. Oh, okay, sure. So, um, the first, I want to think together with the student that uh, given the magnitude of this work at, uh, as a, a doctoral thesis, should it have been conceptual framework or a theoretic framework? My view is that uh, this is a PhD work, which essentially should have been a theoretic framework. And to me, that should have been the emphasis. But what you see is the student trying to build on the two, both conceptual and theoretic, which already shows that probably we did not help him to stabilize on a very particular uh, uh, tradition. And for PhD, normally we encourage that uh, uh, researchers concentrate more on a theoretical frame. And as you, I'm going to go through, you see a very strong leaning towards theoretic as opposed to conceptual. So probably one thing we need to, to, to help here is to, to, to talk more about theoretic as opposed to uh, conceptual. Of course, uh, what is clear here is a state formation <clears throat> and national security. But along the way, uh, the student wobbles a little bit into uh, uh, too many variables to indicate the issue of national security. Uh, it, talks in, it talks about war, it talks about aliens, it talks about many, many, many things. And I'm coming back to this because it shows that the student was not fairly clear on the main you know, uh, discussion, the main uh, issue at work here. But again, allow me to go back to the theoretic uh, in the introduction, the student tells us he's going to look to use a theoretic framework on uh, uh, the realist theory. And uh, in the realist theory, he gives an example of uh, you know a scholar. I think it is Patrick, Patrick Carroll, two zero zero nine two hundred and nine or two thousand and nine. Now. In the dominant literature of realist thinking, it's not correct to start with Patrick Carroll. Carroll is a small uh, scholar in this field. The student needed to have taken us to very, very, you know, mainstream, I mean, rather mainstream literature. And here, the classical uh, main literature is Hans Mockenthal. Hans Mockenthal, his book is Politics Among Nations or alternatively Kenneth Walls, and probably the classical thoughts of Niccolo Machiavelli, Thomas Hobbes, and so forth. Patrick is probably not a very good representation. Having said that, of course, again, as, as, as you move forward, um, 
uh, you, you, you see many, many other th uh, theories coming in. Again, I'll come back to, but I still pray that the student or the candidate uh, normalizes or stabilizes on the realist uh, theoretical frame. And I'm coming back to uh, that particular uh, reason. Uh, and of course, the issue, the central focus of the realist uh, frame is basically picked from Niccolo Machiavelli. And Machiavelli says, anything is justified by reason of state. Anything is justified by reason of state. What Niccolo Machiavelli was stating is that the realist framework is more interested in first the state. And what is it, uh, what is the business of the state? It is security. And when you're talking about security, there are two uh, central points uh, when looking at security. It is a, you know, a power, which is a political power and uh, resource power. So that is the core of the so-called security issue. It's surrounded with this question of a power that is political and resource. And as it were, not in any way interested in issues of morality. So what that therefore means when we are dealing with the subject of state formation process in Sudan, and as uh, uh, the candidate uh, does mention in the problem statement, that the study examines how state formation process in Sudan has affected its national security. So that relation between state formation and national security must be understood from the realist frame. So then we understand what a state is in the realist framework what state formation is in the realist uh, framework, but also what national security is. So uh, I, I thought I needed to mention this, bring us back to focus. As well as along the way, if you came to the purpose, uh, yes, the focus is still on the state formation and national security, but slips a little bit in the purpose from Sudan to Africa. So you have this confusion of how the student is visualizing state formation and national security. And then somehow you, you, he slips away from Sudan to Africa. We know Africa is, uh, is more or less in the focus with a case study of Sudan. And since Sudan is the case, I think for purposes of consistency, uh, let, let the subject be Sudan. So then we are talking about, uh, clearly we are talking about state formation process in Sudan and national security in Sudan. We know Sudan is in Africa, but in a sense, uh, we need to stabilize on that. And of course, having uh, moved away from conceptual, the student now says, okay, besides the realists, I'm coming back to theoretic framework and indeed using this concept called conquest theory and then the social contract theory. Now it is very difficult uh, to, to, to defend the candidate when he hovers between the realists and then takes us to some unknown area called conquest theory. Conquest is an activity, an action of a state, I mean, of uh, state power. You have to conquer as an activity to gain access to state power. So to begin to think that is a theoretical frame, I find this quite difficult. And of course, the idea of social contract theory. Social contract theory would drift you more into the idealist tradition, not necessarily uh, the realist. So what that means is that uh, the student needs to stabilize, particularly on his focus of the subject of state formation and the national security. And if he says it is realist framework, it needs to focus, it needs to be stable there. And of course, uh, having said all of this, and when you read through the entire work, which I had the privilege to read through, 
of course, I see a lot of good work, good thoughts, but also a sort of a mix up. So, Chair, yeah, I want to, yeah. to, 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 to see how the student probably could proceed with this work. As it were, the core discussion is state formation. Now, when you are dealing with the state formation, what is the mainstream literature? What is the mainstream theoretical thinking to inform your subject of state formation? I wanted to, 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 uh, to, uh, to give a hand here that to be able to, you know, to, to theorize and build this idea of state formation, I think the student needs to go more into political economy. And why political economy? Because to understand state formation, there is a strong intersection between economy and politics. Particularly when you follow state formation in Africa from a colonial point. At one point, all the territories in Africa was a garden a garden or a farm. And the metaphor of a garden, the metaphor of a farm is a metaphor of economy. And how we protect this farm or a garden and the social order, the governance around this farm and garden is what you would call politics. So the combination of the two is then what we are calling political economy. So to me, political economy would have been a, a, a very strategic, you know, theoretical tradition in building this notion of state formation. And already there are a number of literature in this area. And I thought for purposes of Sudan, the best literature here could have been by Mahmoud Mamdan on a citizen and a subject written 1996 that helped or would help the student to understand uh, you know uh, the uh, the trajectory between politics and economy in the formation of Sudan as a state and the, uh, the motivation around Sudan was economy and uh, since the economy was central everything else rotating in terms of managing Hello. governing now becomes politics Hello? Hello? Hello, doctor? Yes, please. Yes, doctor. May I yes. please stop you a bit? May I kindly stop you a bit and we come back to you? Okay, okay. Okay, um, you, the, the students can now respond first. Uh, doctor, the student is going to respond first to your concerns, and then later we'll hear from the intern examiner, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, okay. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you very much for the external examiner, Dr. Dr. Daniel. It is my pleasure to have all these recommendations and uh, questions. Uh, concerning the, the magnitudes of the situation in Sudan, which been stated in uh, a statement of the problem. Uh, yes, I try to prove the current Sudan, providing the um, issues that related to the conflict or any other civil wars, the outcomes, the uh, the uh, the real theory. Yes, I talked about it as the study taking this theory and the theories of a state formation. We have a complex theory and social contrast. Uh, theory. These are the major theories that I found during my literature review. And uh, I thought, yes, the issue of Sudan based on economic and political uh, background. I mentioned that one also in the book. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the theory of uh, Professor Mahmoud Muhammadani, that note has been taken. I can include that one also in my, uh, my, uh, my, my book. Uh, according to realism, a state is a major actor in international uh, relations, that is uh, correct. And being that also it is the major in uh, security studies. Therefore, uh, the problem of state formation versus uh, national security in Sudan, uh, these states, the, the aliens, including uh, British, Turks, and Egyptian, when they came to Sudan, they came looking for the resources, and also they were looking for uh, economic resources, including even men. That's why they traded in uh, human beings. Therefore, uh, uh, a state formation in Africa, I'm taking Sudan as example, rather than going directly to Sudan, talking like state formation and national security in Sudan. Yes, I said state formation and national security in Africa and took the case of Sudan to represent whole Africa because Sudan, uh, honestly, since it is formation in 1956, uh, passing through uh, national security challenges as any other state in Africa, many of them. Therefore, I have no problem of uh, going directly to Sudan. And uh, as far as Sudan in Africa, that's why we, we, we go, we've gone through uh, that design of the topic. Presentation. And I happen to read the book. Thank you for that as well. A few points I'm raising of interest. Besides me, I've learned quite a bit about state formation because that is not my area. But I'm interested in a few points which I'm raising for your concern. I'm um, with the external examiner when I think of, you know, this, there's quite a bit here and there. I wish you can, because you have all the data in it, cut out some and focus more on others. And I'll start with this realistic theory just briefly because he has explained it. I just wished you explain clearly what it is and weave that theory through to the end, weaving it through, taking us back through, through that. I know you quoted a number of others, but I thought you could weave that through. That came out right from chapter one when you are mentioning it, mm -hmm. through to when you are drawing your conclusion. And um, you know, if you come through, then the time scope was of interest. If the nine was independence, when and then up to 1956, 2020. I wondered why. You know, you 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 started is a story. It's a qualitative work. It's a story. Tell why that? Why up to 2020? I know there is still war somewhere in South Sudan. That will come. Next point, which is you took Sudan. Do you see that was a chunk? 
I just to rent groups of people. I wish you could meet informative scene because the one at the end in chapter eight, in chapter, yeah, <coughs> theory is used to let you study. Now, my real concern was chapter. Phenomen phenomenology and then ontology. And there's quite a bit of mix there. Now, I'll mention this. You are talking of phenomenological study. Can you tell us a bit about phenomenology? I know you, well, because it is important. Within this study, within that study period, people have studied have experienced something which you can contribute, which you can contribute to your data in chapter five, six, and seven. They are personal experience. And my question would be, yeah, you mentioned that tools used. Now, phenomenological studies are personal experiences. Now, if you are going to talk of 40 to 70 years, this fellow who become a militia and give trouble to South Sudan now. He might be younger. So you needed, that's why narratives, personal experiences are used. A, a general question, not a guided question, a, a, an objective question, what, like what is a state? Because at the back you have that, what is a state? And then you can give a textbook thing. But if people talked of they narrated their short stories. From there, then you carried out with the interviews of those who are willing, little bits of what you have done. But you jumped on to their interviews, which are determined by you. Because when you look at the kind of questions you get, there was little time for probing. Personal experience, very good data was left out. And that cost you on the theme, which I imagine. I was wondering where you were getting themes from. So please, um, if you could look at that, and you may be having that data, pick on people's stories, their experiences, or the process that they have experienced. That one with servant has experienced, that is the assumption, but even this one of 25. So only in your selection of the population. You left out that. So in phenomenology experiences, then the interviews follow, uh, whatever other you want to do, okay? The interview alone at this level is not enough. You know the problems of qualitative research on validity and so on. It is not enough. You need to look at others. That's why when you have your stories, then the interviews of all types, then you, you, know, you are increasing validity of the information that you are getting. Back to the other bit where you wrote ontology and so on. Now, ontology is a central stand in equality, I mean, in social, social research, okay? Social research takes two strands, okay? Yes, you can say quantitative, qualitative, objective, objectivity, and subjectivity. Now, ontology is central. And then you said, well, ontology is realism. Now, realism is a reality. That is the belief of quantitative research, oh. of quantitative research, not qualitative. So, you put realism, I, you said realism, yeah? But it is not, okay? It is nominalism if you want those terms. They don't make much sense. If you are going to confuse them, you'd rather take it simply, okay? So realism, because the world exists, this one is that and that, it's real. That is the view of, of objective, Researchers. So you will correct that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Robin. The study uh, has in, uh, in independent variable, we have five sectors of security, economic security, societal security, environmental security, military security, and, uh, and societal security. These are five sectors. That is why every sector has to be satisfied by the respondents and also the, the, the way I collected data on every uh, sector of this. That's why it looks wider. Uh, national security is not only traditional security. We have traditional security. We have uh, their traditional security, which is state security. That is protection of the state from outsiders and also the border control. That is only traditional security. Then when you come to human security or critical security, that is when you come to the five sectors of security that I have mentioned. Um, realism is a, as a, a right theory that to back this study because realism sees to the state as a major actor in international relations as a discipline of the study. And a state to get formed needs the four elements that I have mentioned, territorial, uh, population, government and recognition by other states. That's why I took realism. Uh, why this is study from 1956 up to 20, uh, 20, 2020, number of events been happening in this period of time. This is a time when Sudan got its independence. This is a time when South Sudan got it uh, flee away from Sudan. This is a time where the number of civil wars in Sudan been experienced. This is a time where the national and international efforts that been done a lot to sustain the, 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 the situation in Sudan, but all these have been failed. So nationally, they signed not less than 50 peace agreement, for example, just in 30 years, 50 peace agreements, none of them worked. And up today, Sudan is still boiling in, in, in the war. So if we take the, uh, the period pre-formation, uh, that time be, Sudan being controlled by, by aliens. So we have, as a Sudanese, they have no input that much. But from 1956 up today, Sudanese have an upper hand to manage and control their state and state institutions. But it's still they are failing to have stability and security in Sudan. That is why I choose this period of time. I think in the, in the book it is there. I wrote in five uh, in five points. Five points: the secession of South Sudan, the civil wars, the effort that been done, the insecurity. The ex yes, the insecurity of yeah of Sudan. Uh, Sudan as geographical area, it is big according to what you have said. I said it's state for me because I, I have to take as a state, all the state, not a region, not province, not a district. This is a state as a whole state, I should take it. And uh, this is a state formation, the whole state, not a region, not a Payam, not a province, not uh, a district. That's why I took as state the way it formed may be affect it is not national security. That is why I took the area of Sudan. And this is not about South Sudan. This is about Sudan, the other one. Yeah. yeah. So, for methodology, uh, interview uh, alone is not enough. I will take a note of that one, but I did also see me structured interviews and I, sorry, yeah, I still interview uh, because this is a qualitative study. That's why I depended on that to interview the people who have a knowledge and information uh, about the study, the variables. So, sorry. Okay. Uh, the, valid, the validity of the study. Yes, interviews. 
interviews can bring a lot of information. When you interview people, they can give you their, uh, their experience, their knowledge uh, towards the, the, the theme, uh, the, the question that you ask. So if other major can be added, the qualitative major can be added into interviews that to collect data from the respondents. Uh, qualitative study doesn't it, it determine whether it is a strong uh, quality of the information or not, but it depends on uh, it, it, um, it is matter the information that it comes from the respondents. Then you can cross check such information, you can uh, analyze it, you can re ask the, the respondent. You can um, measure it with the data, with the secondary data, go to the history back to support and analyze the, uh, the and interpret the respondents. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, the first comment I would make, thank you for having edited this book grammatically because there have been less grammatical errors in terms of punctuation and so forth. But uh, I have at least four issues to raise. Uh, the first one is almost, con uh, is almost connected with the Dr. Ndrembo's issue about the data collection method. For sure, this is a very vast study. And even considering the, the sample size, I don't really think the sample size is enough to, to speak for the whole of Sudan, such a vast country. Uh, maybe you would go for some things like focus group discussions, so that uh, at least you go deep into the matter, to go to the qualitative, the qualitative research. Hmm? But see, these are interviews, but when I saw you are, uh the the i mean the the classes or the type of people you were actually interviewing i, I did not even see the religious leaders and the cultural the cultural leaders although you are talking about social institutions but to some extent uh, i have read some history in south, about south, i mean about sudan I, I am i am i am optimistic that some of the problems uh, ethnically based and and religious, I mean, and religiously based. So, with the social institutions, you are not very specific. I would want the word culturally leaders, religious leaders, and also the age limit, because really the issue stems right from 1956 and before. So, you did not show us very clearly, I mean, the age bracket of the people whom you interviewed. Because, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't think being a historical study, uh, a respondent of 30 years could give you the right information of what took place in 1956 and, I mean, and before that. And another thing, I'm very sure in, in I mean, in Sudan, there are museums. Eh? Should have gone to the museum to, to, to look at the art crafts and the, the, I mean, the artifacts. Those should have given you the what? Uh, the information. Maybe how many? How do they relate to the uh, indigenous people of I Amin mean, of Sudan? Uh, I would also like to, to comment that uh, although your study is a, is a, a qualitative one, but uh, you 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 got collective information from secondary information and you slammed it on Sudan without actually going to the the Sudanic, I mean, mainly the, Sudan, the Sudanese writers. And that was also commented by the external supervisor. See, I think these people would have given you the right information than depending on uh, issue of state information and, and institute LS way around the world and more, and more so in the European countries. And as such, as if you are really putting blames or burdens on the colonies who came to Southern Sudan. I mean to Sudan. Okay, just one more. Uh, I think uh, picking from your purpose of the study, sincerely, 
I'm not seeing the link from uh, your objective one and three uh, with the purpose of the study and the historical, uh, I mean, and the historical perspective of the study. So, and, and that also means there's a bit of a problem in your statement of the problem. Thank you. If given time, I will come. Um, Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one focus group discussion also been uh, managed during the data collection. Uh, contains of seven uh, respondents. Uh, the sample size uh, is small according to what you have said, but according to the authors, number of authors, they don't determine in qualitative study, they don't determine bigger numbers. A satisfactory level of information in qualitative study, they, 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 they take it. Uh, uh, so the survey people uh, in Sudan, especially those who are working in institutions, they have they had enough information about that one. I will come to the to the age limit also, which is connected to this. Uh, religious leaders being uh, represented. I put them under the social institutions and opinion leaders. Social institutions and opinion leaders. These are included for even political uh, parties leaders. We have major three political parties in Sudan. These were also being interviewed. Uh, the age limit, not from 30, I said it is from 40. The age bracket was, uh, sorry, the age bracket from 40 up to 70 years and plus. And those ones, no one is stayed in that institution less than 10 years. So those who have been in these institutions for more than 10 years in that very institution, they have knowledge. They worked with those previous employees who were there in, uh, in the very institutions. Those who are 70 years and plus, they have the history of Sudan. They have the history. Some of them, they've been participated even uh, in the demarcation of Sudan as a state, like people from Western Darfur, the Sultanate of Masali. This area has not been colonized by the colonies. This area, they fought the colonies, which were the French, they liberated the area, they chased the colonies away, then they came and joined Sudan in 1922. Uh, the Sudanese writers, I depended on a number of them, uh, like Sadani, Inas, Prof. Tahtani, many of them, they are there in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the book. So maybe the names, maybe the names. Uh, purpose of the study, I modified the purpose of the study because I kept developing my work. And I came with the, if I can read it, if you the chair allow me. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mansoor. This is a, a topic of a current interest. Uh, just a quick one. Your chapter one lacked the theoretical application. And the, just again, one quick one in chapter one, then I got chapter three. Uh, your significance of the study does not bring out how the study would benefit the stakeholders, and that affects your recommendation and your conclusion. And uh, your geographical scope is lacking. It lacks geographical features, distances, and activities of the study area. Now in chapter three. I am wondering, in your chapter three, you indicated you want to use a qualitative study. So what was the qualitative design of your study in chapter three? Next, explain how the ontological, epistemological, and axiological research philosophy guided your study. That one does not come out. Logical, epistemological and axiological philosophy guided your study. Because you kept it on page 60, 58 onwards, you kept bringing the positivism in. And you know very well positivism 
is not qualitative in nature. You bring a positive positivism, which is not qualitative in nature. Uh, I'm wondering, in your chapter three, how did you scientifically determine the sample size of 27 using qualitative methods? You check on page 66. And even the analysis, uh, you check again. In your chapter four, chapter four, you know very well that it is Plato who begins by talking about the ideal state, the Republic. What is your take? Where is Plato's idea of the ideal state in your study? And what is the current state of Sudan? Uh, you know, to bring out the, the cutting edge of knowledge. Where is Sudan right now in terms of your topic? That does not come out. In your findings, your findings, uh, you brought some themes that you explained, but your findings still bring raw data. You need to show how you analyzed and reached those themes. The sub-themes did not come out clearly. And I want to say this on your model now, the model that you suggested. Question one, where did you test this model? In other words, how workable is this model? If you tested your model, Mansu, I want you to pay attention. The testability of your model as a contribution is lacking here. So where did you test, and before you reach the stability of the model, how did you carry out concept testing that led to the model? Because in qualitative studies, you ought to bring out the concepts that are well tested. From those things that you told us, which concept came out, and how and where did you test them for you to reach that model? Lastly, your recommendations. How do they relate with your significance of the study? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes. what they are um, farmers and those cattles I think exactly but what I remember is that uh, yes this is a quality on uh, page 66 I'm sorry to to miss the question doctor no, 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 uh, my question is mm -hmm. uh, on your Page uh, 66. No, page 58 and 60. Explain how the ontological, epistemological, and axiological philosophy guided your study. Okay. Uh, I come back to that one. In chapter 4, uh, Plato has talked about the ideal state. And here I'm talking about the state formation itself. The state formation, being on the ground before being in, in an ideal. So I choose a number of theories that support this state formation. In short, if I understood your question very well. 
Uh, number of theory, theorists, I mentioned them. The Plato himself, I did not talk about him, but I talk about others. I talk about others who are also realists. Plato himself also a realist uh, theorist. They are all talking about man being selfish. They create this, the all realist, realist assumptions been uh, been common or this realism. I, I do reach the sample size, uh, those respondents, they have criteria that I, I, I choose because of the, the longest stay in the institutions, the, the knowledge that they have, the, uh, the uh, relationship between them and those who worked before them. These are... Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have predetermined number of respondents. Reason being that qualitative study does not depend on the, the specific number. Some authors, and I supported that one with the number of uh, authors, they, they, they determine the quality of the information that you get from the respondent. And they mentioned 50, and also they mentioned even less than 30 respondents. It can be enough because of the time that you need to interpret and explain and do the analysis of the data. Right. Therefore, do you share? I'm to the time here. Uh, the appreciation of what is African is, is protected uh, of the values and traditions of Africans has not yet been taken seriously as a code of belief towards national security as seen through national identity. Therefore, there is a need, this is a further research, no, the recommendation, sorry. It, they are there, they are there, the recommendations are there. All people in Sudan above 18 years must be involved in deciding uh, on the um, laws because Sudan has no uh, permanent constitution up to now. Every government comes with this. Mm -hmm. They are very workable. Issue on the cutting edge of knowledge. What is the current state of Sudan? Is there is there a is there a law? Is there an act? Is there is there a policy that touches these issues you are talking about? There are an, uh, incomplete policies that have been uh, posted in Sudan. They fail the policies up to now because we are fa they are so failing. Policy, where are they in your chapter four? In conceptual framework, I talk about this. Uh, I talk about uh, the national policies in conceptual framework. Um, yes. I talk about the strategies and uh, policies of na on national security. These policies are very weak and they are um, not uh, satisfying the 
stability and security of territory in Sudan. Yes. Um, but, uh, how long should the state commission take? Mm -hmm. And then the other is why have you come up with a quantitative model rather than one that is informed by quantitative uh, A state formation is a process. It is a process. It can start from, from the time that people try to uh, exercise the affinity, the geographical aspects, every, they start there. It completed when the institutions of the state started functioning very well, providing the national security and stability in the state. But it's, it's state formation is a process. It is a process. Uh, I came with a qualitative uh, model. I came with a qualitative model, not quantitative model. And I was explaining that uh, Doctor, you mean this one? It is not quantitative. It is a qualitative model. Where the national uh, determine the quality of sustainable state formation. Okay, yeah, yeah. By the time you reach that, people are doing quantitative studies. Quantitative. Yeah, they cause different relations with the way you are explaining to be quantitative. That's why when I ask you, how do you do concept testing from those things that you bought, then that shows the first how you are reaching. So he, he has a point when he asks you, why are you putting this without following the qualitative process of coming up either with a model or the theory? And that's why I ask you, how did you do concept testing? The concepts that you work from those things, then you reach there. And we are going to strategy the stability of the model. So you need to do some concept testing. But Dr. Ken, I think was, I asked what to be the, the last um remaining days in the exam exam. It's uh um, Hello. Hello. Yes, we have five minutes remaining. If you can utilize those five minutes, your final oh, remarks. Sure. Yeah, uh, very quickly. I've been listening to all the uh, reactions, and thank you very much, colleagues. Very quickly, I want to plead with the student that uh, he needs to ground his study. And the starting point is to analytically understand that realist theory cannot help him in understanding state formation, because the assumption of the realist theory is that already you have a state. And so it helps you now to understand the behavior of a state. So realism does not start with the state formation, but the formation already of a state, looking at the conduct and how the state has to behave. So state formation, the best theoretical uh, foundation should be political economy. And in this political economy, you are looking at the intersection between economy and the politics. And in the case of South Sudan, within the colonial uh, you know, logic, how, for example, South Sudan had a different mode of governance and logic 
as opposed to the northern part of Sudan, giving you the two forms of colonial governance and a single hegemony of a colonial authorities, the production of a dual legacy, and how that later on functioned into the struggle of identity between South and the North, creating this uh, national security issue. And in particular, the student needed to focus very clearly how he would historicize and periodize his study. If you are talking about post-independence, uh, then you are no longer talking about state formation in the classical sense. It starts all the way from the colonial times. That is periodizing. And also historicizing. There are key historical facts that he left off. For example, the Kokora. He is familiar with the Kokora uprising. He is familiar with the 1985 coup. He is familiar with the Madist revolt. Is familiar with the Joseph Lagu civil war and then the SPLA as a block analysis. It helps you to understand the dynamics and the complexity in state formation. Having said the state realism would pick on the idea of state behavior and state, but this is not complete, you have the National Copenhagen School. Copenhagen School cannot mix with realism because Copenhagen School is taking you away from the, uh, the military notion of security into the non-military security, what you are calling the human security. And that picks from uh, Barry Buzan's book, People, State and Fear and begins to reconceptualize the concept of security. So uh, to, to, to pick a case of uh, Copenhagen school, it's also misleading because as far as I know, it's looking at the military notion of security. And that brings me to the idea of securitization, which he should have first of all conceptualized what is this national security? And if the conceptualization becomes significant, which is the case is so central, then it needs to understand national security from the securitization point. And this is where the classical writing of Michel Foucault comes in, Achille Mbembe on Negro politics, and Giorgio Agamben on Homo Saka, to help you construct security threats and how security threats are constructed to help you understand national security. So in a summary, my request is that the student needs to reorganize the entire work, but most importantly, begin to create a strong foundation on a scholarship and very core area. One is state formation. It needs a very strong literature. It needs a very strong analysis. It needs a very strong understanding on state formation so that then the PhD and himself as a scholar in state formation, he should be able to foundationally explain what this is, and also national security. The two concepts have not been well articulated, and my prayer is that it takes this time left to conceptualize and consolidate these areas. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much, doctor. Um, we are, um, the student is going to take note of what you have raised and what other colleagues have raised. In the interest of time, I ask that we move on. So we are going to come back as the panel. And um, at this moment, I just want to summarize for you. I just want to summarize for you the key areas that the panelists have raised. And one is that
I'm going to ask the candidates and the audience to give us some time out and we'll call you back. Dr. Komakech, are you there? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, we are on the part of scoring. We ask that you mm. score and you will um, we'll, we'll send it, you say back. Oh, there was a I format that was it. sent to me. Yes, please. Um, okay, probably I may have you to You send it back through name. into the... Through the email, eh? The name, the name of the person who's... No way, person uh, yeah, who sent it. It was a different name on 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 the form, but that I can delete that name, no. Doctor, you score soon. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, Doctor. Yes, please. Hello. Hello. If you're here, if you can hear me, Doctor, could you please send us your mark? Please send us your mark as we wait for your email.
Are we back? Um, Mansu, the panel has listened to your work and found that um, there are several corrections to make, but also the panel finds your work not being awarded the degree, PhD of Okumba University. Yeah, and an average of 60%. We congratulate you, but ask that you work very closely, very closely with the Director of Postgraduate Studies and Research. Supervisor is here for you to make the final piece much better than what is here. And of course, with the guidance from the panel, you are presenting. Once again, we congratulate you. Okay, the audience was very quick to clap, but um, you will have to submit a compliance report indicating those corrections that you have made. That compliance report should be seen and signed by your supervisor and then forwarded to, and of course the chair of the panel, and then forwarded to the director of the directorate of graduate studies and research. We once again congratulate you and thank you for choosing Kumba University. We wish you well. Thank you. Three months. I'm going to do the now you can clap with <laughs> Is there anything you want to say? Um, thank you very much. And uh, honestly, it was not an easy journey. And uh, first of all, uh, let me start my thankings with the Professor uh, Solomon Asumi and my other supervisor, Dr. Charles Mitaku. Thank you very much for the panel. And it was uh, real work that I did. So many uh, people uh, suffered because of doing this, including my family and uh, my other friends and colleagues uh, inside here, Uganda and outside Uganda. And I'm sure that the comments and corrections that required you will strengthen the book. The, the government also is in its final. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, and on that note, um, by the powers entrusted to me, I hereby dissolve this PhD Viva Goshe panel today, 31st May 2021. I owe you.
Thank <laughs> you. 